What is up guys? Welcome back to another video. I'm on my laptop. Isn't it pretty? Look what I did to it. Don't mind her. She's harmless. But uh I've been testing some stuff. Yeah. No, this is this is by no means the actual what I'm doing right now. But like, come on. But uh I'm using my wireless microphone. We're on my laptop and everything is actually doing really well. And I'm surprised about this because I put this system together myself. Well, this version of Arch, I guess. Let's try that again. There we go. They call it Arch, by the way. It's still not wide enough. Let's do full screen. There we go. So this is stock Arch Linux on my Alienware M15 Ryzen edition, yada, yada, yada. Newest BIOS update, 6.11 kernel, stable. Uh, using the newest version of Pac-Man, which needs a workaround to be able to work. I'll get to that in a second. The final version of GNOME 47, we're on Wayland. Uh, we're using the Numix Circle icons, just in case. The terminal is uh, E2I Access. I don't actually say that. With my 37 mobile, we got about mm, 53 gigs of swap with 31 gigs of RAM. Yeah. So far, we're doing good. Now... Everything works out of the box. I haven't made a video, full video about this in a long time, but everything just works, which is really nice, minus the NVIDIA drivers. We all know we have to install that. Again, we're on the Cache OS kernel, which means we have the best and most optimal performance. It's really nice. And today is strange. This is just a random rant video. I come across a guy in Discord. He is one of those impatient users who jump to Linux and expect it to work like Linux, to, to work like Windows. He has a driver issue due to Nabora's update, Nabara's update, updater. Uh, it didn't fully finish. It caused an issue with his drivers. I did what I normally do to try to fix his issues, but they wouldn't work. And because of this, his videos, they were not working in DaVinci's Resolve and I hooked them all up with DaVinci's Resolve Studio and everything like that to try to help him out to solve the problem. But what was actually happening, if we can get down here to my videos, I believe that's, no, I believe we're up here with this, videos, clips. Uh, it's this one, I believe. So what was happening is they would just stay gray. They wouldn't show this. So it would just be gray, okay? So when you dragged them in the timeline, like this, he would see nothing. He wouldn't see any of this. By the way, have I mentioned how much I hate this interface, by the way? Like, there we go. And it's just the most annoying thing ever because, well, you don't really get to do any of your editing or any of your work, and he, he deals with gameplay and everything else, and it just, it wasn't functioning the way that it was supposed to. So when I hit play, he would see no video at all. So we tried to do pseudo act mods. We tried to do pseudo draw caught dash F dash dash regenerate all, which usually would fix the issue, but something in the core of the driver was just broken. He had a 4080. No, this is not an NVIDIA issue. This was an updater issue. The updater would not, it did not work properly and caused this problem. Now this is very frequent lately. And that in itself is a problem, and I don't really like it. Because then you have people going back to Windows due to a simple error in an updater. And I made that video on how to properly use the updater to avoid issues like this. But when the updater itself fails, what am I supposed to do? He was too much of a new Linux user and too impatient to be able to walk through a full driver reinstallation. I could have had him remove the full NVIDIA driver and install the .run version instead, which would have completely fixed his issue, but I guarantee after about a minute and a half of trying to do this, he would have just quit. Very impatient, not an actual full English speaker, and see that's where most of this comes in. Linux can be hard to people who are not used to what Linux can bring you if that makes sense. Like, you're never going to find someone who just has the type of brain that you need. Like, they're not all going to be, like, 
he's just too eager. You know what I mean? He followed instructions well, but he would just sometimes randomly stop and complain. And I'm a patient person, so I stayed to the end. We did everything we could. It was a nice learning experience, honestly, for me and for him. And hopefully when he comes back to Linux in a week, because that's how it usually happens, the installation, the updating, everything will go great. All right? And if it doesn't, oh, then I'm basically going to just go tell him to install Cache OS and just never have to worry about NVIDIA drivers ever again. Now, we're going to hit exit on this, and we're going to talk some more about some stuff. Now, here's the thing. There's a huge misconception with GNOME about its extensions. Huge, huge, huge misconception. Extensions don't break. They go out of date because GNOME updates. GNOME in the past has had major updates, which means it needs complete and utter rewriting of certain extensions to get them to work. And these updates that people are hating in terms of extensions bring you more features like they change blur effects and stuff like that transparency values important stuff that actually optimize the experience on gnome as a whole and things like this those random things end up improving gnome in the long run versus in the short run sure you use you lose your extensions but here's the thing i opened up a pull request for this for myself all I had to do was change 46 to 47, done. And for this one, I had to report a simple issue. It had to do with accent colors or something like that. I'm not, I don't remember what it was fully, but that got updated. Great. Reporting these issues end up getting things fixed. Okay. That's how it works. With this, I reported that it needed a metadata uh, update. So a number change, once again, adding 47, done. Now with this, they no longer are maintaining this extension. But you know what I did anyway? I opened up a pull request. Now it has GNOME 47 support. This, once again, also just needed a simple update to the metadata.json. Done. Like, most of this is just a simple change minus blur my shell. This, 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 like all of this, which is super simple and easy to do. And here I found out that GNOME might have an event planned for HDR, which is kind of surprising. I found a weird, weird little strange PDF on uh, while searching for some information about how to activate HDR. Uh, let's go into here and right here. See this? Look at this. Look at this. This is so cool. So HDR stack enablement in GNOME Mutter. Here's the agenda, the introduction, the type of HDR, HDR meta, transfer functions, all of this stuff right here. It, it was super fun to read uh, for the main reasons that I learned a lot about how the HDR like actually works and functions. I'm used to dynamic HDR. That's what we have on our TVs and stuff like that and on my monitors on my desktop, which is really cool. And it just, it goes over every single little thing that gnome has planned for hdr like this is above and beyond anything i've ever seen kde do to date this is brilliant i didn't learn how to enable it <laughs> not by a long shot but it taught me a lot of stuff which is which is what i wanted to begin with right and it's pretty cool it's in my discord Linux has been a bit slow lately, and there's no denying it. Sure, KDE 6.2, I got a video up about that. GNOME 47, I got a video up about that. Uh, kernels are something that is kind of hard to do videos about, but I do try my best to talk about kernels when I have the chance. And a lot of people don't know that the 6.8 kernel was hell on earth. Because I never really did a video complaining about it. I just basically skipped to 6.9 and called it a day and completely avoided it. The same with 6.9. After 6.9.4, it became as bad as 6.8. Dropped it, went to 6.10. A little bit into 6.10, blur my shell stopped working due to a kernel update. I tested that thoroughly. I don't know how that could ever 
make a change like that. But when it happened, I skipped 6.10.5. It went to 6.11 on both my desktop and my laptop and stayed there. And now here we are, the final version. 6.11 is stable and I'm enjoying it. I love every moment of it and it's brilliant. By the way, for those of you who scale, the very limited amount of you, um, GNOME scaling is now fixed, okay? I have a 1080p display. I don't scale, but they did something in here to GNOME to make sure that it scales better. So let's go to 200%, hit apply, keep changes. Crystal clear, okay, great. 175, crystal clear. Not blurry at all, still looks great. 125, look at that. It still looks good. 225, oh, this is gonna look ridiculous. Oh, claustrophobia right there. But everything just looks crystal clear. The icons, you name it, it all looks really good and crisply. And the best part about them fixing this problem is it affects everybody. It does. In gaming, when things look blurry for no reason and they're not supposed to, it should fix that. It fixes all X Wayland type of scaling bugs. It's brilliant. And honestly, I'm very impressed about it. And I'm not sure if it's enabled by default, but if you grab the DCOMF editor, okay, it's available on every distro, and you search for experimental, you'll come across experimental features. I'm going to hit reload on this and you toggle off default value. You go down here and X Wayland native scaling. You can either turn it off or on. I don't, I don't really know how this works exactly. Uh, let's see. Let's Wayland, uh, Lex X Wayland client use their native scaling support. If scaling is not supported by the client, the client will not be upscaled. Settings only take effect when monitor scaling profile is enabled as well. So you'd have to enable both this and this. Very cool. Make Sputter default to logical to layout logical monitors in logical pixel coordinate space. Blah 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 blah. To manage high display, high DPI monitors. Great. See, this is a very interesting, fun thing to note. Ah, <sighs> so it is Monday, and that makes it four days away from my birthday. Yeah, pretty much. I won't be doing any videos that day. I think I'm pretty much just, well, I'll be probably right where I am right now with my kids. So don't expect a stream or anything like that. And uh, try to remember that we have the Linux tips and tricks. I try to update as much as I can. Like right now, installing 560.35.03 drivers on Fedora right here. Uh, I've updated this so many times now. It's kind of ridiculous. And uh, how to work with AAC audio. Uh, other users have added this stuff in here too. Windows position, uh, echo, CPU scheduler. It's all in here. It's like a, a, a hive mind for everybody here. to Just jump in and put as many tips and tricks in here as possible. And almost all of these I've turned into a video at this point. Like the affinity stuff is in a video and someone made my desktop a text guide, which is kind of interesting when you think about it. Yeah, it goes over everything. So I'm actually going to delete this and this. And I'm actually going to lock these posts because these posts are not for chat. They're just for... <laughs> They're just, you know, to help you with simple things. If you need chat, it's always like right here. You know, there's a forum for chat. There's forum rules as well to follow. <sighs> I don't know. Just Linux rants. That's all this is. I hope that user finds his way back to Linux. And I hope when he does that the updater is fixed and working according to plan. And he doesn't have any issues from that point on because he was having gaming issues that no one else has. So his driver was definitely borked. Anyway, if you found any of this interesting, don't forget to subscribe, to like the video, share the video. And uh, we might take a look at Turtle tomorrow. Yeah, Turtle seems pretty cool. So stay tuned for that. If it intrigues you, it should. Turtle, turtle, turtle. Bye, everybody.